Hello, I am Sri Prakash Tiwari and uh, currently I am working as postdoctoral fellow in uh, Professor Bernard Kipling's research group and I am working on organic field effect transistors, basically fabricating them and uh, studying the performance and stability issues in uh, those devices. So what I will talk about today is uh, fabrication of top uh, source drain uh, organic field effect transistors. So let me explain about organic field effect transistor uh, device structure which is we have top contact and we have bottom gate. The bottom layer is heavily dubbed N plus silicon uh, which acts as a gate. The first layer which is deposited on the bottom is gate contact which is a titanium gold layer, 2 nanometer or 5 nanometer titanium and 100 nanometer are gold on the bottom. In between you see a gate dielectric layer which is essentially a silicon dioxide layer, preferably 200 nanometer thick in this case. We passivate the silicon dioxide layer with a surface treatment or buffer layer which is OTS which is octadecyl trichlorosilane or for N channel transistors we have various polymer layers like benzocyclobutene or uh, polystyrene. So we passivate the dielectric layer to prevent any hydroxyl groups to come on the surface and degrade the performance. This structure shows a semiconductor layer which is widely known pentacene which is vacuum evaporated but this layer could be any spin coated polymer which can act as a semiconductor. So here I show the actual device which has been fabricated. So you could see two parallel electrodes which act as source and drain and there are various channel lengths ranging from 200 micron up to 25 micron which is spacing between two electrodes and we have some capacitor structures which are circular structures with varying area which are used to uh, characterize the capacitance density. So to fabricate them basically we have uh, silicon substrates uh, which are heavily doped and one side polished and bottom side is rough. To make the devices we need gate electrodes, so heavily doped silicon gate electrodes but to connect the gate electrodes you need uh, some conducting metal like gold and hence we deposit uh, gold electrodes on the bottom. So, so to do this we need to protect the front side uh, with a photoresist. you could see the color on this wafer. So basically we protect the front surface to protect the silicon dioxide uh, which acts as gate dielectric and then back side we remove silicon dioxide and put a titanium gold layer and titanium acts as a adhesion layer for uh, this gold. So, so here uh, I explain how we start with the substrate. We cut it down, either we can dice it in a properly nice manner one inch by one inch or if you just need small substrates you can break it like in, a, in pieces. So, so these are these are the substrates having uh, gold in the bottom and photorist on the top. So this is a nitrogen glove box and uh, these organic semiconductors are very sensitive to moisture and oxygen. So that's why we have control environment in these boxes where uh, we control O2 and S2 up to 0.1 ppm level. So basically we have the substrates ready and we transfer uh, these substrates in inside these glove boxes and then before spin coating basically we need to have the semiconductor in uh, control ambient so that they don't degrade and we have uh, better devices. Uh, so, so let's go and see how we start the spin coating process and these boxes are basically the pressure inside the boxes is higher than what is outside so that's why these the arm kind of things where you put your arms, uh, they are always outside. So this higher pressure inside helps the oxygen not to go inside while we are doing the process. There is a button which helps us to reduce the pressure inside. So I, while I will be putting my hands inside, I need to press that button. So for some time the pressure inside uh, becomes low and I can put my hands uh, inside the glove box. Before uh, processing some solutions, uh, we have some gloves inside. We need to protect these rubber gloves with proper gloves which are uh, more chemical resistant. So now coming to the spin coating of organic semiconductors. So basically we have the semiconductor material dissolved in a solvent. In this case we have chlorobenzene solvent uh, for PCBM C60 which is a commonly known electron transport material. So we dissolve this material and we stir it overnight uh, to make a uniformly dissolved uh, solution. 
we can change this chuck which is used for spin coating we have some different sizes and this chuck should be able to hold the substrate by vacuum so to start i will have a substrate which is silicon dioxide with a buffer layer of a polymer bcb and then i will place this substrate uh, in the middle of that chuck and the next thing i'll do is take some solution in a syringe from this bottle and after that i'll use a filter which is in this case 0.2 micron filter so that i get a nice and clean and uniform film on this substrate then i put some solution in the middle of the substrate and the solution should be enough to cover the substrate entirely so basically right now uh, we are uh, spin coating this uh, semiconductor at 1000 rpm for 60 second and the speed and time depends on uh, what kind of thicknesses you want so in this case we have uh, around 80 to 90 nanometer of pcbm but generally we can change the speed to get thicker films or uh, thinner films so now we have a nice film on this you could see slightly blue color of the pcbm film on this substrate and the next thing will be to place these substrates for uh, metal deposition so we'll transfer these substrates through our anti chamber to the next nitrogen glow box after we have finished the spin coating procedure uh, we have to transfer the samples to uh, next glow box so this is the chamber where we put the substrates from the other side and then we transfer these substrates and then we close back this transfer chamber we have some uh, mask holders where we put our mask which is uh, used for top source drain uh, electrode depositions the first one is mask for our transistors so on one mask we can do nine different substrates so this is the metal film we have openings where the metal goes through in the evaporation system and it gets deposited on the substrate i'll put this metal mask on a substrate mask holder we have to match these metal clips properly we can take our substrates and tape it from the back side so your semiconductor it comes on the bottom and from this side you you deposit the metal once you have these substrates pasted on this mask you can transfer it to a evaporation system which is attached to this glove box so that we don't expose these uh, substrates to the air again so the next process would be metal deposition after the fabrication of the devices we have to transfer the devices in another glove box where we characterize the devices Actually, we have a, a nitrogen a cylinder which is air tight and we keep the devices inside nitrogen ambient so it is not exposed to air so this is a fabricated device what we have transferred uh, this is a chuck where we have a metal plate on the bottom and in the device we had a gold gate electrode on the bottom which is placed on the chuck now we have two probes for source and drain the movement of this probe is controlled by three knobs so one knob move the probe in upwards or downwards motion and then you have one knob on the back where where you can move in a forward or backward direction and one knob which can move it left or right you can also move the chuck to make it centralized while you move your probes and then you can probe uh, these electrodes one by one so we can actually pattern these devices to have less parasitic leakages we can scratch the device in a way where that semiconductor area is disconnected from anything else we can just use one probe to basically pattern the semiconductor we can just go all around a device and cut through the semiconductor gently we need to touch these electrodes we don't, don't need to push it very hard check number one is contacting to the gate which is in the bottom of these substrates and then you can touch the two probes to the source and drain this transistor has three terminals two are source and drain electrodes and one is gate electrode which actually controls the device to turn on and off now we are uh, going to characterize the devices so 
ट्रांजिस्टर हैज थ्री इलेक्ट्रोड्स गेट सोर्स एंड ड्रेन एंड द टू कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स विच वी आर इंटरेस्टेड इन फर्स्ट इज ट्रांसफर कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स वेयर वी स्कैन द गेट वोल्टेज फ्राम निगेटिव टू पॉजिटिव वोल्टेज एंड ए करेंट फ्लोज फ्राम सोर्स टू ड्रेन इलेक्ट्रोड एंड वी रिकॉर्ड दैट करेंट एंड देन एट सर्टन पॉइंट यू यू कैन सी द ट्रांजिस्टर इज स्विचिंग ऑन विच इज काइंड ऑफ टर्न ऑन वोल्टेज सो इन दिस केस इट इज अराउंड स्लाइटली हायर देन वन वोल्ट एंड देन आफ्टर सर्टन टाइम यू कुड सी द करेंट गोइंग टूअर्ड सिचुएसन रीजन वी टेक ए स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ द ड्रेन करेंट and then we could find out what is our threshold voltage so we could take a slope of this curve and wherever it uh, intersects the x axis that voltage is called threshold voltage and with this slope we can calculate the electron or hole mobility the next one is where we fix the gate voltage and then scan the voltage difference between source and drain and that is called output characteristics i'll explain what is output characteristic on the x axis you see drain voltage and at various gate voltages you have different curves like from 0 2 4 8 and 10 so the transistor starts so this is scanning at uh, 0 gate volt and 0 gate volt means device is off and you could see that current as the voltage increases to two the device is slightly on and then after threshold voltage you could see the current increasing but after certain time there is a saturation and that's what we need in this transistor device now i'll show how the transfer characteristics is done like device is off in certain region where gate voltage is zero or low or in negative side when you apply positive gate voltage the device is on and again when you characterize at a certain drain voltage you could see the device turning on from a off state and you could see that going through and coming back this is to find out hysteresis in the devices and these devices don't show any hysteresis but if you have some dielectric you could actually see a gap in going and coming down these both scans have a kind of distance and that is called hysteresis